Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back office. You might know about my recent processor type videos, and this is the AMD FX9590 I've removed from a machine because it was faulty. I believe it was faulty. That's my firm belief. And I've swapped it out with a new one, and the new one seems to be really good, running really cool and doing all the things it's supposed to do. So what someone told me was, the problem with these CPUs, or any CPU really, that uses these sort of metal cans on the top, the heat spreader, is that underneath there's chips, but lots of chips, like the cores and various chips, me memory management units, things like that, and they've got this metal heat spreader, which is almost like a heat sink in itself, to stop people damaging the, the sort of silicon when they put their own heat sinks on there. And what can happen, apparently, underneath, this can sort of have problems with the material, you know, the sort of arctic type, silver type material that lives underneath there. And uh, these get faulty, and it, all, it causes all sorts of things, like you'll get one core getting really hot, and the other one's okay, and it just sort of affects it. So apparently, what you can do is actually de-lid these, take the lid off, and reseat all of the compound underneath, and then sort of use it, use it back again. So I thought this would be quite nice. I could do it scientifically, you see, and do this, try to fix this, and then try it in my PC that I've just fixed. Although I have to admit, I'm less inclined to take up, take out that CPU now that I've got it all working again. But I do have enough for a whole separate setup. Science would dictate I should set up that second setup first, test this, show that it crashes, and then do the fix. But I'm going to I'm going to level with you. I know it crashes. It's been crashing a lot. It's been crashing for months. So if I can do this and this thing just works stably and I'll just leave it on your 100% CPU for a couple hours doing something, rendering, playing a game, and it doesn't crash, I consider that a massive success. So what I'm going to do is really just crack on and open this up first, because if I build all the other C PC case, everything like this, and then screw up this CPU, I'm going to be really annoyed and I've wasted a lot of time. I might just break this by trying to get the lid off. So the first thing's first, I'm going to try to find something to hold this in, and there'll probably be a jump cut. and. Uh, We'll continue. Okay, I'm back. I found this block of foam. It's a bit dense, but at least it allows me to perch perch the CPU on top. Its pins aren't going to sink into this foam. It's not like a sort of microcontroller, but at least it should be a nice even dispersal of those pins. And if I put any lateral movement on it, it won't cause just one or two pins to bend. It will be trying to spread the load between them. So I guess I sort of heard this material is a kind of a foamy foam. So I'm going to get something like this and just work at the edge a little bit. Let's see what happens. I know that there are, oh yeah, it does cut in a little bit. It is like a kinder silicon or silicone rather. This knife is no good. I'm going to try to dismantle it, actually, I think. Be careful if you're doing this. You don't want to slice yourself up. Oh, and I really don't want to slice myself up either, but I'm going to be ginger. Yeah, it's kind of going in under the edges about two mil. So it just goes to show you, you can get in there. But I suspect the, the sort of squiz is all the way through. What I would advise, yep, it's definitely going under. What I would advise, put your fingers on top so that if you slip with this keep and keep the force down, see that edge? Keep the force down to the bottom of that edge so at least if this slips, it won't jump up and bite you. And if your fingers are on the top, they should be out of the way of danger. Just working that. I have to say, I was just looking for this uh, foam, and while I was looking for the foam, I found three motherboards, three that would run this. Unbelievable. I've been swapping out motherboards over the years, well, over the year, <laughs> and uh, just because of this problem, and it wasn't anything to do with the motherboards, power supplies, or memory, or even the GPUs. I've got spare GPUs now. Right, so that's kind of worked around the edge, so I'm just, I'm just going to see if there's any way we can put some force on a corner or see how, how deep this is. On some of these, it's actually quite a thick band, like imagine five mil deeper, this, this sort of material. So you'd have to sort of get under there really far. The last thing you want to do is sort of lever off a sort of corner or one of the CPUs that lives underneath the, the sort of cover, which that would be really bad news. So I'm just going to really gently push it along. You can see there the whole depth of the blade. You see the shiny part of the blade, which is about sort of a mil and a half, two mil. That's going underneath there now. <laughs> C 
and you can just almost get my nail under there. Just going to keep working it. I think that's the only only way to do it. Just keep working it around. If I can get that blade that deep all the way around, at least it's a good start. Be careful. You don't want to cut into the PCB either. So that's that kind of silicone cement coming off. I don't really. I know this sort of chip is knackered, but I don't really want to break it any further because it, it still has sentimental value to me because it cost me quite a lot of money when I bought this. Right, working that corner now. We went quite deep that time. Let's try this one. Yep, really quite deep. And I don't know if in the camera if it looks as, it looks scary, but it is kind of scary because you do have you're very aware that if you slip, this blade is going towards your your hand. Not sure really how you can protect yourself against that, other than just don't do this. All right, so I'm just going to take like a fine-ish screwdriver. It's not the finest I've got. No, no chance. Might need to just move some bits and pieces around here and see if I've got a much finer screwdriver. So this one is that little bit tinier and then even tinier still. So we can try the middle one. Nope. Yeah, I can see it flexing. It's flexing the corner of the PCB. So I'd be very, again, very wary of putting too much pressure on that. I think another little round here, maybe just very, very gingerly bending it, trying to bend it with this blade. Of course, this is a snap blade. So if you put too much pressure on here, this blade's going to break and sort of do you some damage. So be careful of that too. Oh yeah, look. Oh, did you see that? Right. It's <laughs> Gonna have to break my own rules now and kind of slide it with the blade moving towards my hand, but you can see it's gone in quite deep there now. We know that it's several millimeters on some of these under the can, so I'm just gonna see I'm pulling the very edge of the blade in now. It's starting to try to work its way back out. That's where you've got to be really careful. So I'm moving it away from my hand, so if it does slip, hopefully it won't bite me. Take your time, really take your time. I'm telling you, this is definitely a dangerous feeling. It feels dangerous in my hand. Pull the blade away from your hand, keep pulling it. Turn it, pull it. If I can drag that edge now down through the can, you can see it there just coming through the can. And of course, watch your finger when you're pushing on this edge of the blade because it's still quite thin and sharp. I've seen some people use safety razor blades for this and although, yeah, that's a great source for a sharp blade, very very dangerous because safety razor is so thin that if that metal catches you even on the bit which doesn't have a blade it's gonna bite you right just working it around that corner again look diagonally straight across like that I really don't know where the chips are on this I'm not I don't feel I've hit anything hard so I'm hoping I'm not hitting any packages in there so it doesn't feel like I'm doing that right Getting around the corners again. I've lost count now if I've gone round in a full sort of 360. I think I have, so I'm just going to try to sort of prise it ever so gently. Nothing yet, but. <laughs> I think this is this is productive. This feels productive. This technique. So I'm just going to keep going. See, look at that. See the blade now, totally in on one edge. That's kind of what you got to play with. Nope, not yet. Now, if I can get that all the way around, so that's the first one blade actually feels like it's stuck to me. Pins still look good, still look intact. Yeah, blade was stuck by the goop. The goop got the blade. So it's just 
sticking there won't just go in there so I'm just going to try to sort of drag it through a bit more there may well be a chip in that corner though so be careful see if I can see anything if you hear anything that sounds like a kind of ceramic on cera metal on ceramic stop I kind of imagine I'm feeling something there could be just my imagination. So let's keep going. Yes, I think we're getting there. We must be nearly there now. Again, keep an eye on those pins. You don't want to break those bad boys. Whew, that's a big old way through that corner now. Got no idea what's under this. Certainly nothing on that edge. Might be something on that edge though. Done on that side. Right, so I think we've gone we've gone round so many times now. I think it's time to start putting some actual pressure on this, see if we can just get it levered up slightly. PCB is bending ever so slightly. Just going to keep working rounds. So. Oh, when that slips, boy, is it scary. Might run this under a file. Let's make it a bit sharper. Let's see if we got something. Bit of bit of brute force and ignorance with this one. Much bigger. Right, so I've gone round. I've really, I've really not been able to sort of lever this up in any sort of discernible way. Whoa, whoa! He said, "Shit." 
Yeah, that didn't work out. <laughs> oh no, it's destroyed. Look at that. So that's funny as hell. As I was cranking this, remember I was saying it's going in really deep? Look, you only want it to go in a tiny fraction. So what I was actually doing, I'll zoom right in. You can actually see I was removing these surface mount resistor arrays. Yeah, that's not good. And not only that, when I got to the, let's just ignore the fact that I, I sort of damaged those. But look, when I got to this sort of center point here, there's no way in hell that thing is cooked into the lid. I don't think you could decap, decap it really, delid it. So that is a delidding fail. That's kind of a bit annoying, isn't it? So, so, so long, my FX AMD FX9590 chip. I don't think you're going to be <laughs> in any use anytime soon. But it's interesting to see the sort of split here on this dial. You can actually, if you look closely, you can like see all the bits and bobs, which are probably the cores. I think one, two, three, four. I think those are the cores there. And then there's all the other bits in between that does all the magic. Absolutely amazing to sort of see this up front. Look at all these little surface mount. You see them right there? The chances of really delidding this are really extremely small. I would not advise you guys to try to delid one of these 9590s. These these are just going to be so so hard to get around. I mean, some of them here look like they've got some sort of potting on them, but these ones on the edge certainly don't. But yeah, you're just going to lift them. Apart from that, yeah, I don't see any actual signs of real damage on here. But then, would you? You know, I just really when the chip goes faulty, are you going to see anything at that scale? Probably not. I mean, look at my finger. Nope. So yeah, please comment down below if you've done this or been successfully <laughs> successfully done it on one of these AMD chips. Um, please click like and subscribe if you're that way inclined. And as ever, thank you for watching.